Okay, everybody, let's get started. So, um, Professor Chen is out of town today, so I'll replace him talking about production costs today. Maybe he thinks this stuff is so boring that he wants me to teach it, but um, it's, it's very important in two senses. First, it describes the firm's behavior. So when you think of how firms make choice in the whole economy, you have to think about the production cost. The second sense is this part of the material is a little bit mass intensive compared to other lecture, but it is always, almost surely will show up on the exam. So make sure you pay full attention today. Okay? So let's begin. So um, when we think of the production cost, we usually divide into two parts. The first part is a fixed cost. So what is a fixed cost? It just does not depend on the quantity of the output. So thinking of we are having a car factory. So to produce a car, you have to buy land for the factory. You have to set up the machines and the production lines. And all this money spent won't depend on how many cars you spend, uh, you produce, right? So this part of cost usually we calculate as a fixed cost. And the other part of cost we call it variable cost because it will change as you produce more. It usually increase as you produce more. So come back to the car factory example. If you want to produce more car, you have to buy more parts. You have to hire uh, more workers. You have to have more truckers to uh, transport all the new car production, right? So as you produce more, you have to spend more money to produce this, on either on the material or um, other input. So that's a variable cost. So then the, the final equation is purely um, a counting sense that the total cost is adding fixed cost and the variable cost together. Okay? So everyone is clear with these two concepts? Okay. So now let's come, let's see a numeric example. So in the car factory example, for all the fixed costs, like the land, the machine, is 9,000. And the variable cost is um, if you don't produce anything, you don't need to buy any parts, hire any workers. So the variable cost is zero if the quantity is zero. But if you produce one car, you have to hire somebody to work. So this costs you a thousand dollar. And if you um, produce two cars, you have to buy more parts and maybe the workers have to work longer or you have more workers on, so th the cost goes up, okay? So the total cost is just purely the sum of these two, all right? So if we draw this on the diagram, what do we see? So first, we draw the total cost, right? So basically the, the last column, I should have the, so we basically just draw this column in a diagram and we will see um, first, total cost rise at the level of output rises, right? This is just the basic intuition. As we produce more, we probably, th the cost is higher. And this part, which is means you have to spend this cost even when your quantity is zero. So this part captures the fixed cost part. And, um, Okay, so sorry, here's just two more lines about the total cost. So this says total cost is the minimum cost of producing the output. It just means, um, you know, it's not the firms waste something or the, the, the workers are not, uh, have a reasonable high wage or something. So it's just the total cost is already the producer trying hardest to minimize the cost already. So if you want the firm give you two cars, you have at least to cover their cost. So this part just says it's the minimum cost for producing the output. And total cost includes a reasonable profit. So here, this profit most means if you think of a normal return of uh, investment. Think of I am an entrepreneur, if I spend the if I put the money in the bank, I will have a five percent interest rate. So, 
in that sense, the money I um, invest in the factory, Carfax should also give me 5% of return. So that means that could count as a total cost, right? The money I borrowed from the bank is also cost. So here it is about the total cost. Then um, a very related concept and also important is the average cost. It's very simple to calculate it. It's basically just you divide the total cost by the quantity. It tells you on each of unit of the output how much the cost is. Okay. So um, here, back to the numbers, you will see that AC column is just total cost divided by the um, quantity, right? So if you draw the average cost on a curve, what do I see? You will find out it has a U shape here. So why does it have a U shape? Anyone get a, an idea? Okay. Pardon? Yeah, exactly. So why the average cost decrease in the, when you increase the output? because the fixed cost will average out, right? So if you only produce one car, you have to pay all the machine, all the production line. But if you produce two or 10, then on each of the car, the, the part, the average fixed cost is only a half or a tenth, right? So because usually the fixed cost is pretty large, as the quantity increase, the average cost decrease. That's because of the fixed cost part is averaged out among larger quantity. Then why this part is increasing? Yeah? Yeah, so as you, incre you increase your quantity, especially in the high level, then the variable cost might dominate the whole cost part, right? Like you buy all the material you can get in the United States, then you have to import some other steel from other country and all the transportation costs may be really high to you. So then this part increase just means as the resource get um, more scarce, then the variable cost might increase um, as the quantity goes up and it will drag the average cost up. Okay, yeah, question? Yeah, it has actually. So uh, when you think of um, the economy to the scale, so it's basically have the decreasing level. It means as the scale is larger, it gets uh, gains on economy-wise, right? So and this is decreasing. Okay. Any question? Okay. So now we come to. Um, concept which can distinguish people who don't take econ one, right? So marginal cost. It has a similar flavor as the marginal willingness to pay. So marginal cost is thinking of if we forget whatever we put the money on the factory. If we produce one extra unit, how much money we, how much, um, what, what is the cost? So um, maybe it's easier to use these numbers, right? So, if it, so the marginal cost, forget about the average cost. It's always come from the total cost. So what happens is if you produce zero, it's everything is zero. You don't calculate marginal cost. So if you if you um, thinking about the first unit, so fixed cost is nine thousand, and if you produce one unit, the total cost is ten thousand. So the extra money you spend producing from zero to one is only 1,000, right? And similarly, if we check in the second unit, you want thinking about, okay, we already have the machine, we already have the factory, and we already produced the first unit. Now I'm thinking of uh, whether I should produce a second unit. So the extra money to produce a second unit is 2,000, right? because it costs you that much to produce one unit and it costs totally that much for you to produce two units. So the difference tells you the actual 
extra cost for producing one extra unit. All right? So if you do this deduction everywhere, you will get this marginal cost, right? So if we draw this on a diagram, we will see it's increasing, right? So why it's increasing? It's exactly the reason what are we talking about, the increase in average cost. The marginal cost producing one more car is more costly because the resource is scarcer. There are less workers to be hired in the local city and the parts price might go up if I produce more, if I, um, yeah. So that's why the marginal cost curve have an increased slope. And so here, um, we said it's for high output because when you're in high enough output, the, the resource, scarce, scarcity of resource might kick in. But thinking of a low high put output, what would you guess about the marginal cost curve? Instead of it's um, steeply increasing, what would it be? It would be flatter and it might even decrease, right? Why? Think of the beginning of the production. Pardon? No, so here, yeah, that's a very good point. So here the marginal cost has nothing to do with the fixed cost, right? Why? Because the fixed cost is 9,000. Fixed cost never change with the output. So here the question we're thinking is, what is the extra cost for extra unit, right? So the assumption is you already produce something, or you are ready to produce something. So the 9,000 actually is not anywhere in the marginal cost. So when you think of the marginal cost, you should separate it from a fix, uh, fixed cost. You should be not there. So come back to this, my question, then when you think of the beginning of the marginal cost curve, it it's not because the fixed cost averaged out, right? Because margin cost even doesn't have the component of fixed cost, okay? So what might be the reason? Return to scale, right? So more specifically, it might be learning by doing, right? So the workers produce the first car, it has to have all the special knowledge, but when he produced the second car, he already had the knowledge, and he's more skillful at producing cars, so the cost, maybe it cost, takes fewer hours for him to produce a car, right? So here is like when you just produce a small quantity, the, the scarcity of resource hasn't affect all your marginal cost yet, but other knowledge, sorry, your question? Yeah, so here, uh, the, the curve is not exactly, I mean, corresponding to these numbers, right? So here is probably more linear or flatter. Here, I just, I probably just want to illustrate um, it's increasing. And actually, if you go to the real world, and you will think it's marginal cost curve might be something flatter like this. And it's even have a little bit of decrease in the beginning. That's, that's what we call return to scale, okay? So yeah, here is just, tell you the trend is increasing. Okay, now um, comes to the hard part. So here, if we draw the average cost and the marginal cost together, what do we would find? So first we would find it's usually the average cost is uh, higher than the marginal cost in the beginning. So what's the reason for this part? fixed cost, right? Yeah, because in the average cost, you calculate a fixed cost, but in marginal cost, you, you exclude that part. So in the first, um, the, the average cost is really high to produce the first two cars because it has to account for all the machine and the land. It, it um, ex expense of that, right? So the, so the average cost is really higher than the marginal cost in the beginning of the production. 
Then, as time goes on, because the marginal cost is lower than the average cost, the extra unit you produce, the, you, it seems like a mo moving average idea, right? So the extra unit you produce, the marginal cost is smaller than the average cost. So you would add that up and do an average again, then the average cost should go down, right? Does this make sense? Any question on that? So this is very important. I want everybody knows that. So when marginal cost is lower than the average cost, then as quantity goes up, the average cost decrease. As the marginal cost, thinking of adding a smaller than the average number, then you take the average again, so all the average would go down. Okay, so once the marginal cost exceed the average cost, then the marginal, the increasing of the marginal cost will drag up the averaging cost, right? Because for extra unit you produce, the marginal cost is higher than the current, current average. Then you take an average again, so the, the, the final average um, will be higher. So after, if the marginal cost is higher than the average cost, then the average cost will have an uh, increasing trend. Okay. Um, not necessarily, right? So, because when produce decide how what's the quantity to produce, he compare the average, uh, the marginal cost and the price, right? Because if he sell one unit, he can get the price of the product. Suppose it's fixed. So if the price is really low, and uh, forget about the fixed cost, fixed cost is already done sunken cost, then he will produce only this quantity, right? So here is tell, telling you what's the social optimal of this economy, of this car factory economy is. It should increase um, the production until here, where the minimum minimum uh, of the average cost interact with the marginal cost. Okay, so it does not mean the firm has to produce Q0. It might produce here, or it might produce here. It depends on the price of the product. But here, I just want to tell you the relationship between the average cost and the marginal cost. And you have to remember that the average cost have a U shape and they interact. When you draw a diagram on the exam or in the homework, you should have to remember to make sure that the diagram you draw is right. I will see whether the lowest point of the average cur cost curve interact with the marginal cost curve, okay? Any question? Okay, so let's move on. Um, yeah, here is just what I'm saying. So when the marginal cost is lower, the average cost will be decreasing, and when marginal cost is higher, the average cost will be increasing. So now, how do we link the concept of average cost, marginal cost, with the total cost? So how do we represent the total cost in the graphs? So the marginal cost tells you um, the extra cost of producing one unit, right? It does not have the fixed cost. So here, the graph tells you if you want to know what's the total cost of producing one unit of product, it should be the area under the marginal cost plus the fixed cost, right? So basically, the, the area uh, here tells you the variable cost. And then the total cost equals the fixed cost plus variable cost. So if we change to quantity two, then the marginal cost of the first unit is here, the marginal cost of the second unit here, so you have to add them together. So this is um, like an integral idea, right? And also, you still have to remember to put the fixed cost part. So that so fixed cost plus 
the total area here gives you the total cost of a pu produce two cards. Okay. So um, here is a general quantity that is still the same idea. This whole area you add, you basically add the marginal cost of each unit here, and then add the fixed cost to give you the total cost. So here, so how do we think of uh, the change in the total cost producing Q1 compared to Q2? So the fixed cost of produce these two quantities are the same, right? The fixed cost just means you have to set up the machine. And then this part gives you the change of the total cost, right? So the extra money you have to spend in producing code Q2 in addition to Q1 is the marginal cost of producing one more unit from Q1 and, and another unit other than that. So basically, you add all the, this part of marginal cost together and give you the total cost change of the two quantities, right? And this part, when you're talking about the total cost change, it's only the integral here, right? No fixed cost anymore because the fixed cost cancelled out. Okay? Any question? All right. So now, how do we represent the total cost in the average cost curve? Anybody has an idea? W what is a formula? How do we calculate average cost? Yeah, it's total cost divided by Q. So if we know the average cost, the, the simple way to get total cost is the average cost multiplied by Q, right? So here, if I tell you the quantity of the production is here, then the total cost of producing Q0 is just AC multiplied Q1. So mathematically, it's just the area of this rectangle, right? So here is not integral anymore. Because what we know that the total cost is just the product of average cost and the quantity. So it is always the area of the rectangle here. Okay? So, um, yeah, so that's what we call about total cost and the average cost and marginal cost. So the last point here is thinking about the production decision, right? So if we think enough, how much quantity does um, the society should have the output? Like think about how many cars should we have? We have from the consumer side, that's willingness to pay, right? And we should check the marginal, m marginal willingness to pay. Suppose we already have a thousand car in the society, should we w have the thousand one, and the consumer want to spend two thousand or uh, two twenty thousand for the car? So that's the marginal willingness to pay, right? And from the supply, from the firm side, it's the marginal cost, right? It already produced a thousand car. Should it produce another extra car? It costs the company so and so to produce one, so it's marginal cost. So we should have. A thousand one car. If the social marginal willingness to pay is higher than the marginal cost, right? It's more beneficial to the society. If producing one more car is lower than the marginal willingness to pay, so in another way, the society or the firm should expand the production until the marginal willingness to pay to the marginal cost, right? So this is from a social optimal side. Just one extra point. How do we think of, if we only consider the firm side, how much car should the firm produce if you're using the marginal cost concept? So the firm's goal is to maximum the uh, pro profit, right? So how to make a profit is if the price the consumer pay is a higher than the cost, right? So firm does not compare the marginal, I mean, it's not necessarily firm consider about the w marginal willingness to pay. He think about what's the price of the car. Is it profit, 
profitable to produce one more car? So firms compare P instead of marginal willingness to pay. So if P is higher than the marginal cost, then the firm will continue to produce, right? But hopefully, we hope the whole economy is well functioned in the sense that the demand curve reflects the marginal willingness to pay. So the price equalizes the marginal willingness to pay. Then whatever the final production decision is, it's also the social optimal. So that's just one extra point. So that's actually all I, I'm supposed to teach you today. So thank you. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay. <laughs>